After returning from an amazing trip to Mexico with my family, I wanted to give my take on all of this and share the redemptions that I made. The hotels that we stayed at, the hotel loyalty that was leveraged on this trip, the airport lounges that we visited, the cards that were used, and how we can stack up points to duplicate a trip like this in the near future. And hang out if you can. I'm gonna talk about the cash value of this trip, the points that were redeemed, and the simple point calculations of everything. And yes, I will be talking about my experiences here. But even if you don't have kids, this should still be a value to you. I see lots of redemption videos on YouTube, and I know they don't necessarily do as well in terms of the views, but I get asked pretty often to share my experiences, and I'm a man of the people, so I want to keep it real and share these views from my lens and the cards that I use and how I make all this happen. I think we overestimate the knowledge or lack thereof of credit cards and the average consumer and how to play this game. And after sitting on the beach talking with an amazing family about how we both ended up at this property and the credit cards that they use day in and day out, I'm like, damn, they could easily afford another trip like this with points just through some simple strategies. And we'll talk about those strategies shortly, but first up, I had a trip booked to the Bahamas hotel at the Grand Hyatt Baja Mar, flights, accommodations, everything was all booked. But after watching videos on YouTube and other sources, it just didn't make sense to me. Why do people keep going to this property, overpaying for subpar quality food, a jam-packed resort that you have to make reservations at one of 40 restaurants months in advance if you want to get in? I'm like, come on, man. I have kids. The times that we eat, the locations that we eat, our schedule changes on a regular basis. And if I would have paid $30 for a quesadilla at 9.30 p.m. at a place we had to wait to get in for my kids to take one bite and then fall asleep, I would have absolutely lost my damn mind. Plus, having to wait 30 minutes in line for a coffee, bringing my own snacks to store in the room that doesn't have a refrigerator that you can use. Good luck if you wanna go visit this property. Have fun, let me know your thoughts if you do. So we pivoted to a Marriott in Cancun, an all-inclusive Marriott at that, that is still in the process of being renovated, but the majority of it is done and it's an extremely nice property. They're working on some water slides and a lazy river and some things for their kids zone right now, but still a really nice property, tons of food and drink options, things to do, activities for the kids. We basically just bounced back and forth between the pools, the beach and the bars. I'm still craving some margaritas and fish tacos and guac. My kids were used to ordering mango smoothies by the end of the trip and they were all about the all-inclusive lifestyle, going up, grabbing cookies and bottled waters and things like that. So we did a few excursions, which I booked through the hotel and was able to charge back to the room. And I bought some clothes and some things like that for the kids that were all charged back to the room. And since my Ritz-Carlton card gets 6X at Marriott Properties, I was able to take full advantage of this, charging everything back to the room and maximizing the earning potential. So 6X at Marriott Properties for having a Marriott Bonvoy credit card, plus my status, Lifetime Platinum Elite, I get 21X at Marriott Properties, but then through the Ritz card, 3X on other travel, that could be flights booked direct or car rentals, and then 2X everywhere else. This is a bit of a catch-all card, and I feel extremely confident using this card, especially with the purchase and travel protections that the Ritz-Carlton card comes with. Plus, I like to keep it super simple with the cards that I use on trips, and I wanna to continue to build up my bank of Marriott points. So I was able to receive a full refund, both for the Hyatt property in the Bahamas and for my American Airlines flights. Everything was done with miles. They were credited back to my account right away. So moving on to the flights, this was a last minute flight and change. Looking to book a flight to Cancun last minute, these tickets were in economy $844 a piece. Now I'm not gonna pay that, so this cost me 160,000 American Airlines miles. And I could have looked at some alternative strategies and transferring out to British or some other programs to find better redemptions, but this was time sensitive. And with the points used minus the $122.70 in taxes and fees on these, this was still a 1.8 cent per point redemption in economy on American Airlines for a last minute trip. So to me, still really good value. So for the travel experience, we connected through Miami, both directions. It was the quickest way to get to Cancun. Tampa does have some direct flights, but me and my American Airlines status, I wanted to go that route. So on the way down, we stopped at the Priority Pass restaurant location in Miami's airport, the Corona Beach House. And with this, you get up to a $30 credit per person. So my wife and I, we took the two kids, 
we got $60 in credit, which covered everything that we needed at this restaurant. Now on the way back, a couple of factors came into play here. My kids were being absolutely ridiculous and we didn't want to go back to this Corona Beach house. Plus that restaurant is so-so. So we stopped at the Admirals Club Lounge. I have the City Executive World Elite card from American Airlines, which got my wife and my kids in with me at no additional cost. They have a kid zone so my kids can run around and be banshees and not make a fuss about the lounge. Plus the food was actually pretty good this time. They had grilled Jamaican jerk chicken, some sweet plantains, some veggies and hummus and things like that that my kids uh, absolutely enjoyed. So it saved us a lot of money and a lot of headache with my kids crawling around on some dirty ass restaurant floor. So a few simple strategies for those that aren't necessarily as advanced with their credit card game or just looking to sharpen the saw. First, get a few cards with some legit sign up bonuses and that could be in the form of points, meaning north of 50,000 points or things like free night awards and elevated credits and benefits. So if you care about these elevated free night awards from Marriott, you may want to consider the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card from American Express. Now this card comes with a $650 annual fee, which is pretty hefty, but there are some ways to offset this and then some. First, that 85K free night award, and you can tack on another 15,000 Marriott points if you wanted to, so up to a 100,000 point per night stay. And it also comes with a $25 monthly use it or lose it restaurant credit that can be used anywhere worldwide. So some easy ways to offset that annual fee. Plus you do get platinum status just for holding this card and some other protections and benefits and things that come with these luxury premium tier cards. Just keep in mind with American Express and their language, if you get the brilliant card first, you won't be eligible to receive the sign-up bonus on the lower tier American Express Marriott cards. If you wanna go the route of the premium tier Marriott cards from Chase, watch my video down below on the proper steps to get the Chase Ritz Carlton card if that one is of interest to you. So with any of these cards, just make sure you're reading through the fine print, especially as it relates to the sign-up bonus and what you receive, the minimum spend required and things like that. Like with the Brilliant card and then their middle tier Bonvoy Bevy card, you can receive points not free night awards, but actual points that you can use. So like the Brilliant card, you get up to 185,000 points. The Bevy, I believe right now is 155,000 points. So if you are looking to stack up points and not necessarily looking at the free night award certificates, that Bonvoy Bevy card may be the best bet year one, 155,000 points that you could bank, which would be two nights worth at this property. So north of $1,500 in value. And then you can always upgrade to the Brilliant card. So if you don't want a high annual fee hotel card right now, my advice would be the Bonvoy Boundless card, which is from Chase. At the current time of this recording, there is a five free night offer. Don't go to the Marriott website to get that. Click my referral link down below. It'll take you to the five free night awards. Those free night certificates are valued at up to 50,000 points per night. So you're not gonna necessarily be able to use these free night awards for all inclusives. But if you're looking to take a trip to most places in the United States or some places abroad, these 50,000 point certificates are more than enough. Plus you can tack on 15,000 of your own points at up to 65,000 points per night if you wanted to go that route. And you do that for the first year and then you can always product change up to the Ritz Carlton card which comes with that 85K free night award if you wanna get more into the luxury tier card year two. Or if you don't want a Marriott card at all, holler at me, find me on Instagram. You can click my link down below to get to my Instagram account. Send me a direct message and I'll make a couple recommendations based on what you're looking for. Second, maximize your top spin categories to elevate your earning potential, but don't be afraid to keep it simple. If you can get solid redemptions like the one that I talk about in this video for a Marriott, use your Marriott card for its top earning categories like the Ritz Carlton card, which earns 3X on car rentals or flights booked directly and 3X at restaurants. Plus, you can leverage the Marriott Eat Around Town program, which I'll link on the screen, to really elevate your restaurant earning potential. Now, there's a lot more to this and how to maximize your top spending categories. I have other videos where I talk about that and the specific cards that I use. Just know that I'm usually working on a sign-up bonus for a new card. And with that, I usually put things like taxes, utilities, kids shenanigans, things like that on that new card. The third strategy, talk to your friends and family and coworkers and get some referrals. This is a super simple strategy and an easy way to get 100,000 points plus 
just by having a few conversations. So this Marriott Hotel is now an all-inclusive property and the room rate prior to taxes and fees for our party of four was $877. Pretty crazy, not something that I really wanted to spend out of pocket. Now the points total for this was 305,000 points and Marriott has the pay for four, stay for five. So essentially it's one free night uh, when you get to use your points for a redemption like this. So even without that, this averaged 76,000 points and change for the four nights, which at a simple point valuation is north of 1.1 cents per point, which is great for Marriott. And factoring in that one additional free night, this brought the total down to 61,000 points total per night, which at that 61,000 points per night total, this is north of a 1.4 cents per point redemption with Marriott, definitely one of the best I've ever found. And the fourth and final strategy, which works alongside strategy number three, is having a player one and player two setup. If you have a significant other and if you feel comfortable with this strategy. So a few examples, and first here's a Marriott example. So you can refer your significant other any Chase Marriott card other than the Ritz Carlton card since you can't directly apply for that card, nor is there a sign up bonus for that card. But for any referrals, you get 40,000 Marriott points. So you could refer your spouse or significant other or a friend one of those Marriott Chase cards and get 40,000 points per referral up to 200,000 Marriott points in total. Plus with that referral strategy, your spouse or significant other would get the sign up bonus at the time for that card. So shameless plug here, you could grab my referral link down below for my Marriott Bonvoy Boundless five free nights referral. You could take advantage of that, then refer that card to your spouse or significant other, which would give you 40,000 Marriott points then your spouse or significant other would get whatever the sign up bonus is at the time for the card that they choose per your referral link. Doesn't have to be the Bonvoy Boundless card. So you could work together to hit the minimum spend requirement to get the sign up bonus for these cards. You could even add each other as authorized users. Uh, just be careful with the authorized users. Some cards on the premium tier in nature like the American Express Platinum or the Chase Sapphire Reserve do have fees for adding authorized users, but with those fees come some of the extended benefits like airport lounge access. There's countless other examples I could give about referral strategies and building points with specific ecosystems. So comment down below or hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions or would like any of my recommendations. With all of that, go earn some points, enjoy the redemptions. These are memories that we're gonna talk about for the rest of our lives. Cheers.